Well, a lot of you have probably already heard about this, but college athletes can now use their name and their likeness to get all sorts of endorsements. Now, in some cases, some, a few, college athletes are getting millions of dollars now as a result of that. And again, that is fairly new, but there could be some legal challenges and some issues with that. For more on that, we're now joined by Nine News legal expert yes. Whitney Trailer, our guy for stuff on things like this. Yes. Um, getting into the legalese of this. But Whitney, first of all, um, could you explain how this started? I believe it was a Supreme Court ruling yes. uh, last year, back in 2021, that led to where we are now. That's exactly right. So this is an issue, college students being paid. This has been an issue for uh, many years, actually, uh, way back to the inception of the NCAA and actually the Supreme Court case they it was Justice Gorsuch who wrote the opinion and he went into great detail about the history of the NCAA and for example when college athletes athletics started there were professional athletes and all these other things and so in 1905 it was Theodore Roosevelt who got together with Harvard and Yale and Princeton mm. to try and develop some rules around what can be done it still was all over the place. Professional athletes were playing at the college level, and so they started putting these certain restrictions on because they wanted to make it more uh, that it was only students that were able to play. And so they imposed that. They no longer were allowing you know, professional athletes because it was people were getting hurt, and things like that. And so then they put all these restrictions on what students could receive as compensation. So it was originally just tuition. Then it expanded to books and room and board and things like that. Well, that was in 1948 and then in, I think, 1960 that some of those things changed. Well, now you're looking at college sports and it's a huge industry, a multi-billion dollar annual uh, you know, industry. And so folks are now saying, well, sports, college sports isn't what it used to be. And so there's been this ongoing debate about whether these student athletes should be paid. So the Supreme Court, and there's been a lot of litigation. So last year, the Supreme Court heard uh, a case and they brought the case on an antitrust violation saying that the NCAA was essentially restricting competition by limiting what they're paying all these athletes. And they all came together sort of as conspirators. And so the court said two things. It said, you can't pay athletes directly, so the college can't pay them a salary, if you will, but it did say that they could expand the educational benefits, so things like graduate school, and there's more uh, educational benefits that these student athletes can receive. But importantly, the biggest part of the ruling was that the athletes could now sort of take their name, image, and likeness and make money off of that. So in other words, they could go have endorsements, they could put on summer camps, things like that with their name on it, whereas before they couldn't. And why that was so unfair was because you had these, a band member, you know, could go and say, hey, I'm from, you know, UCLA and promote their, you know, and tutor and, and, and charge kids for uh, tutoring them or teaching them how to play. These student athletes couldn't do that before because of these restrictions. So now, at least they can use their name, image, and likeness in, you know, third party deals. And again, uh, my, my understanding of it is that there's a couple of athletes that are making a couple million dollars off of this. How has this been received legally now that it is the law of the land? Now that, now that again, there is this precedent at this point that, mm -hmm. again, these college athletes can get money for it. How is it being received legally? Are there challenges against it? There are challenges because the NCAA makes its own rules. And so each state now has gone through, not each state, but several states, including Colorado, have went through and enacted legislation. So here in Colorado, uh, Representative Leslie Harrod and uh, State Senator Rhonda Fields actually passed some legislation that said hmm. Athletes in Colorado, student athletes, could receive money for their name, image, and likeness. They can't receive money before they start school, though, and they can't receive direct benefits. So there's, I think, about 40 states that have legislation related to the name, image, and likeness. The states that don't, the NCAA rules govern. So what we're expecting is a federal, uh, at some point, some federal law that governs all of the country and these student athletes are saying that, hey, you can use your name, image, and likeness. Well, this seems, uh, this is quite striking to me for a couple of different reasons. One, uh, 
Is there at least legally some sort of a political angle to this? Because you mentioned it, Leo, Neil Gorsuch, a pretty mm -hmm. conservative uh, Supreme Court justice, wrote the opinion on this. Then Leslie Herod, who's a pretty progressive state rep here in Colorado, uh, defending it here. Yes. See, it seems to be, am I, am I right that mm -hmm. it seems kind of bipartisan that there's some support around this? That's exactly right, yeah, because uh, those are, that's a great uh, observation that those are two kind of, you know, opposite uh, political uh, spectrums. Yeah, Liz, Leslie Herod and Neil Gorsuch right. probably aren't agreeing. Exactly, much, so. right. And uh, Justice Kavanaugh, who's also obviously very conservative, wrote a very strong concurring opinion. In fact, he said um, NCA's decision uh, to build massive money-making enterprises is on the backs of student athletes who are not fairly compensated, you know, is not fair. And they're saying, look, you have this multi-billion dollar industry and these student athletes, they're the reason for it. And so if you look at Justice Kavanaugh's opinion, it looks like they will go further down the line to pay, actually pay student athletes at some point. And the NCAA's argument was, well, people really appreciate college athletes because they know the athletes aren't being paid, you know, for like the love of the game. And, and uh, Justice Kavanaugh kind of made a joke about it. And he said, well, are we going to go to the restaurant where the cook is being paid the lowest because we want a guy who loves cooking? You know, and it's, um, it's a relevant point because you have to look at where things are right now with uh, college sports. It is, a lot of people would argue, it's a business, a business first. And, and that leads me to it. Again, not to maybe inject my own opinion on it, but I, I really can't think of too many arguments against this other than there's, I know that college has this, uh, college sports has this kind of aura of, well, it's, you know, these students and they're doing it for the love of the game. Mm -hmm. But is there any other argument out there against this? Is there a, a legal argument against this? Well, the, you know, the legal argument is that we want to maintain amateurism in college sports, and, mm. you know, which is more almost of a theory. But, you know, I think on the street, what the, the people who are arguing against this, I think, don't really have a true understanding of the context of a student athlete. And they're saying, well, you're getting a free college tuition. But is that really fair in light of what you're giving? Because especially at the Division I level, these student athletes, it is a arduous, difficult, uh, intense situation. And everybody's saying, oh, well, it's awesome. You're playing sports, you get to play a game. But no, the amount of pressure that's, that's on these folks is, is very challenging. They're traveling across country, back and forth. They're, you know, it's, it's a real challenge. And the other, I think, misperception is that people say, well, you're going to pro, you know, professional, you get a free education and you're, you know, going to the pros. But the number of student athletes that make it to the professional level and that get endorsements like uh, now, like the million dollar endorsements, that's a very small percentage of student athletes and even a small percentage of division one athletes. I mean, that's what people forget is the elite nature. I mean, these athletes are the top of the top of the top, you know, and so some of them will make money, but that's such a small percentage. And I think people just make the assumption that, well, um, you know, these guys have it all. They're, you know, they're getting a free ride and all, and they don't look at the, uh, what is being given up and what the student athletes have to do. Well, you alluded to this. What does the NCAA think of this? Well, the NCAA is now, they, they have, um, they lost the case essentially in some ways saying, yes, this was, there were some antitrust violations. But the NCAA is saying, look, we want to, you know, maintain the integrity and they're moving in that direction, um, but it's, it's slow and every state is different. And so they're expecting uh, federal legislation for, for Congress to do something so that we have uniformity across the nation. That's probably fair, right? They probably want at least something that governs the law of land rather than differing states, differing opinions. Um, any final thoughts on this? Anything that we haven't covered on the legal side of this? No, I just, I think it's a really interesting issue and I just, um, I do feel that there was a, uh, a misperception of uh, what was behind this and mm. that somehow these student athletes are getting some, you know, sort of unfair advantage because, you know, they're, they're getting a, a, a free, free education. And you just have to look at 
the nature of sports today, the nature of the value of an education, and, you know, again, it's the numbers. There's just so few, even the number of full-ride scholarships, you know, is just not as significant as people think. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's a fascinating issue. It's something that's been debated for years. As you mentioned, you can go, what, go back to 1905 yes. with some of these discussions and some of these laws, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm sure this is not the last we will hear of this, but no. uh, yeah. you'll be with us all the way through. Nine News legal expert, Whitney Trailer. thanks so much for joining us sure here on Nine News Plus. Yeah.